We are going to go ahead and take a look at counting rules and we will look at the basic counting rule, we'll look at permutations and at combinations. Okay, now with counting rules, we use them to determine the number of ways that something can happen. For instance, let's say that you go into a sandwich shop and you have white bread, um, wheat, and rye bread that you can choose from and then you have ham or turkey that you can choose from and then you have American cheese, Swiss cheese, and provolone cheese. Now if you want to know how many different sandwich combinations you can have you can set up a tree diagram. So let's say that we first pick white. Well if I pick white bread I could then pick ham or on my white bread I could pick turkey. Now let's say I go with the ham if I were to pick ham, I could pick American cheese, Swiss cheese, or the provolone. So if I went with white bread and ham, I could get three different sandwiches from that. Now let's say instead of the ham, I went with the turkey though, so I'd be working on this branch of my tree. Well, if I did turkey, I could get the American, the Swiss, and the provolone. Now instead of taking the white bread, let's say I took the wheat bread. Well, from there, I could do the same type of thing. I could pick ham, and then I could get these same three options for my cheese. I could pick turkey, and then have three options for my cheese. Or, I could pick the rye bread. And if I picked ham, I could go with my three cheeses. Or if I picked turkey, I could go with my three cheeses. Now, if I look at my total number of sandwich options, I have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. I have 18 options of sandwiches that I could pick, assuming that I can only have one of each topping. Okay, this is called the basic counting rule, and there's not really a formula that goes with it, but it's more of an explanation. And it says if you have R options and each option has M choices, to find your total number of choices, you would take your M1 times your M2 times your M3, and so on and so forth. So for us, we had three options for our, our um, sandwiches, and each option had M particular choices. So the first one had three types of bread. We had three choices for our bread. We had two choices for the meat, and we had three choices for the cheese. Well, in order to find our total number of options, we had to take 3 times 2 times 3. So that's what our basic counting rule looks like. Okay, so now let's say we're doing telephone numbers, just a regular 7-digit telephone number. And our only rule is that the first number cannot be 0. So what we want to think about is how many... Um, how many options do we have? How many choices do we have for this first number here? Well, since it can't be zero, it could be any number one through nine. So there's nine different choices. That's our first M, our M1, for the first slot. Now, our, our next ones have no restrictions whatsoever. So our next one, we could have zero to nine, which leaves us with 10 choices, and 10 choices, and all the rest of these are going to be 10 choices because they don't have any sort of restriction on those. Well now if we multiply all of these together you're gonna get 9 million. So there's 9 million different telephone options if our only restriction is that the first number cannot be 0. Alright now we're gonna look at what factorial is and that exclamation point does not mean you're really excited about k. It is actually called a factorial, and you would read this as k factorial. And what it means is you multiply. You're going to be multiplying a sequence of numbers. For example, if I had 6 factorial, that would mean I multiply 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So I take whatever my number is here, and then I multiply the integers down to 1. Okay, now another one, vocab, that you probably haven't had before is a permutation. 
A permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. Very important that it's ordered. Now, if you think about um, a lock that has a combination, you had a certain combination that you had to use to get your lock open. So let's say it was 3, 20, 17. You had to do it in this order. You had to do the 3 first, you had to do the 20 next, and you had to do the 17. If you had done 23, 17, your lock would not have opened. This is actually a permutation because the order of it is critical. So and when you're thinking of a, a combination for a lock, it's actually a permutation because the order is absolutely critical. Which leads us to the actual definition for a combination as far as math goes. When you have a combination, they are unordered. So in terms of combinations, it does not fit with our normal um, definition of what the word combination means. A combination of a lock, like the common term combination of a lock, is actually a permutation. A combination from a mathematical point means the order doesn't matter. So it would be saying that if I had these numbers, let's say I had 3, 20, 17, that it wouldn't matter what order they were in and they would represent the same type of thing. So mathematically, combination doesn't fit our everyday use of the word. Our everyday use is actually what a permutation is. So here's just some examples to try to help clarify the difference between them. On the left here, the order matters. So this one is permutations. So if you had assigned roles, president, vice president, secretary, let's say it was Joe and Mary and Mike. That would be very different than having Mike as the president and Joe as the secretary. Very different arrangement because they have specific titles, specific roles. Now that's different than if you're just picking an advisory board and there's no positions on it. So if you had Mike, Mary, and Joe on the board, that's the same thing as having Joe, Mary, and Mike on the board because the order doesn't matter as long as they don't have particular roles. Um, if you're talking about a race, first place, second place, third place, order matters. If I got first place and you got second place, that's different than if you got first place and I got second place. So the order would matter. If I just needed to pick a sample of five students from a class, doesn't necessarily matter who I pick first if I'm just saying that I'm picking a sample. Um, the combination of a lock. We already discussed that a little bit. That's actually a permutation. Uh, computer programming. If you know anything about computer programming, the order that you put certain things in is absolutely critical in order to get your program to run. So you have to make sure things are in the right order when you do computer programming. Uh, your batting order of a baseball team. There is actually a big difference in your batting order as far as your strategy for winning the game. Telephone numbers. If I dial the telephone number, not sure why I put a comma there, 5123786, that's going to be somebody different than if I were to dial 5218637. So the order of a telephone number really matters. Same thing with license plate numbers. You have to have a specific order for your license plate numbers. Now, the not some more the non-ordered things. If you just have a grape, apple, and banana salad, doesn't necessarily matter what order you put the grapes, apples, or bananas in. Um, your lottery ticket numbers, you don't have to match them in order. When you have bingo, when you're doing a bingo card, it doesn't matter if you get this number first or this number first because you have to end up with all of them in that straight line. All right, now for permutations. If you read the definition carefully, it said are objects from a collection of, and we need to change that to n for the way I wrote the formula, from a collection of n objects. What that means is let's say I have 10 digits that I can pick from. I can pick digits from 0 to 9. So I have 10 digits to pick from for my permutation of the lock on my car. And the lock on my car needs four of them. 
So I, out of the 10, I need to pick four of those different numbers. And now we're assuming that I can't pick any number twice here. So I can do 10P4, which means I would take my 10 factorial, according to my formula here, divided by 10 minus 4 factorial. Now if I look at this, this means I take 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. And on the bottom, 10 minus 4 gives me 6, so I have 6 factorial. So I would have 6 times 5 times 4 all the way down to 1. Now, I don't want to have to type all this in by hand if I don't have to. And if you think about the way ratios work or fractions work, I can cancel as long as it's top to bottom. So the 6 up here can cancel with the 6 on the bottom because it is multiply and it's 1 from the top and 1 from the bottom. The 5 and the 5 will cancel. The 4 and the 4, the 3, the 3, the 2, the 2, the 1, the 1. So all of that will cancel and all I'm actually left with is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. That is a lot easier to type into my calculator than having to do the entire string of numbers. So if I do that, I still end up getting 5,040. So there is 5,040 ways that I could pick a four-digit code to unlock my car from 10 digits. Okay, now combinations, our formula looks very similar, but just has this slight difference right here. So the number of combinations, and again I used N instead of M, let's say that I need to pick an advisory board and there's 20 people to pick from, but I need six on the board. So I would be looking at 20C6. Now since it's an advisory board, it doesn't matter what order I pick them in. So I can use my formula 20 factorial divided by 6 factorial and then 20 minus 6 would give me a 14 factorial. Now I can use a similar process as before. The 20 and the 14 factorial, those will cancel from 14, 13, clear down to 1. So on the top, I'm just going to be left with 20, 19, clear down to 15. But on the bottom, I still have this 6 factorial. So I will have 20 times 19 times 18, times 17, times 16, times 15, over 6 times 5, times 4, times 3, times 2, times 1. Now from here, you can still do more canceling if you would like to. Like the 5 times the 3 will cancel with my 15. I could reduce the 2 and the 16 to an 8. I can reduce the 4 and the 8 down farther. I can reduce the 6 and the 2. Um, I could reduce the 3 and the 18. That is another option that you can do. You can continue to reduce like that or you can just multiply it out and divide. When you do that though, you end up getting 38,760. So there's 38,760 ways that I could pick this advisory board if I needed six people from a group of 20. All right, now doing that by hand isn't necessarily the most fun thing. So on your, if you have a calculator handy, you would want to be looking for possibly a button that says stat or prob or math or PRB or probability. If you can find one of those buttons on your calculator, that will take you actually to a button that says like NPR, NCR, it'll have a factorial button in there. Um, if you can't find it on your calculator, you might want to check your calculator's manual because this makes those calculations so much easier. When you are doing a problem like this, like if I did our last one, our 20C6, most of the time I have to type in 20, then hit my NCR button, and then type in the 6, and it will give me the answer just like that. Now, depending on your calculator, you do want to check with the manual to make sure that you have the sequence correctly, but it can do that calculation much quicker than doing it by hand.